Hello everybody. Today we're going to be doing uh, lesson 1.13 and 1.14 in Brian Passwater's AP Precalculus uh, lessons. So uh, this lesson is about what's called, uh, they call them regress regression models. As a normally physics teacher, I would just call this best fit. The idea is that we're taking some data and we're plotting it. And then we're seeing, is there some function, like a linear function, a quadratic function, that best fits the shape of the data, and then putting a line to it, actually giving it a description. So let's just write, uh, jump right into the first example. Uh, the first page is about how to use a calculator. Um, the thing is, uh, all the different, all the graphing calculators are different. So the best thing to do for you is going to be to look up um, for your particular calculator, how do you do that? I'm going to demonstrate using Desmos. Desmos is what's available on the AP Precalculus test and the other College Board tests. Um, so I'll put those in. I'm not going to be using a, a TI, and then you'll see how to do it on one of the uh, those types of calculators on the uh, on the Desmos calculator. So example one: the age and weeks and weight in kilograms of five randomly selected babies from a particular pediatrician's office are listed in the table above. Um, and then they tell you a linear regression uh, can be used to model these data. Data, by the way, is plural. The singular of data is datum. It's a Latin word. Uh, so anyway, these data, data is plural, where y is the predicted weight of the baby, and that, uh, that is x weeks old. Right? Again, functions, input, output. Right? So the, uh, the input is the age, and the output is going to be the mass uh, in kilograms of the ba of the baby, they say weight in kilograms. Again, physics teacher, kilograms is mass, but whatever. We're not gonna uh, we're not gonna quarrel about such things. <clears throat> so let's take this data and put it into a table. Okay, in the Desmos calculator, let's say we're starting with nothing, and I want to put in a table. So what you do is you hit the plus sign, and then down you can pick table. So I want to put in a table. And I'm just going to put in these values. So I'm going to hit 4, Enter. Okay, so when we put in the data, that's what we get. All right. Now, where do we see the regression model? Again, physics teacher, I would normally call this a best fit line. But in, in math, the term is a regression model. Um, and so what you can do is, uh, in the top left, there's like a line with some dots next to it. You click that and automatically it gives you a regression model and it picks what it thinks is the best regression model. So it says linear regression. Um, you could pick something like a quadratic reg regression and it'll try to fit quadratic to that, but it's really not necessary, right? So linear regression and it gives you the function. It even gives it to you. It's right there, right? Y equals 0.185X plus 3.545. Okay, so the function was 0.185t plus 3.545. All right, now, it says using the linear model from part A, what is the predicted weight in kilograms of a baby that is 10 weeks old? So we can take the data, we can put in, <clears throat> we can use this model, and we just plug in 10 for t. t would be the, you know, the time that's the input in the... In the Desmos function it, uh, calculator, it's really easy. Where it has the, the line there, y equals 0.185x, there's a little, it looks like uh, a page with an arrow going into it. So if I click that, then it gives this to me on another line. Okay, so what I can do is put my cursor here in this function, and then I hit the gearbox, the little gear up at the top, Notice one option now that comes up next to this function is a table. So I click that. Now I have a table where I can give some input and it'll give me the output. So I want to put in 10 as the, you know, the weeks. And it tells me that um, the expected weight, the expected mass is 5.395 kilograms. 5.395 kilograms. Okay, and then it says the weight of the baby is, if the, sorry, if the weight of a six baby is 5.3 kilograms, use the model um, from part A to find what is the age and weeks of this baby using the regression model. 
what would be fine? Okay, so all you're doing here is you're writing the function and you're putting in 5.3 as, uh, as the weight, right? So 5.3 equals 0 0.185 T plus 3.545. When you solve this, you end up with T equals 9.486. And the units here are in weeks. Okay, um, so when you're choosing a model, a regression model or a best fit line, whatever we want, you want to call it, um, we've got some different options, right? It could be linear, it could be quadratic, it could be cubic, and it all depends on the shape of the, um, the function, the shape of the, the data that we get. So the idea is you plot the data and you can try out the different uh, functions to see. And in Desmos, it's really simple to do that. But there are some examples here where you pick what you think it's going to be. So example two, for each of the following situations, determine which of these is going to be the most appropriate. So balloons are filled with water in preparation for an epic water balloon battle. Sounds exciting. Which each water balloon is roughly spherical. The radius of each water balloon is measured relative to the amount of water it holds. So um, volume is four-thirds pi r cubed. Now you don't, you don't need to know this. You don't need to know that that's the, the function. Um, but if you just know that um, volume is length times width times height, right? So it's, you know, the dimension but cubed. So this is going to be a cubic function here for uh, radius to volume. Okay, and B, Totino's, Totino's pizzas are on sale. The price of the one pizza varies uh, 199 to 219, depending on the variety, and the total number of pizzas are counted relative to the total price of the purchase. So this one's going to be linear, right? Each pizza is counted as another, um, you know, price that you're getting the total price coming in. So this one is going to be linear. Uh, C. Sprinkler is placed in a yard to water the grass. The sprinkler rotates in a circular pattern and waters all the grass. Um, the radius of the circular path is measured relative to the area watered by the sprinkler. I mean, area is two, nope, area is pi r squared. So this is going to be a quadratic best fit. All right, example three. The above table provides data for eight ordered pairs. So ordered pairs are just, uh, you can think of them as points, right? X, Y pairs of, of points input, output, et cetera. Which function type best models the data in the table, linear, qu linear, quadratic, or cubic? Explain your answer using characteristics from data in the table. Okay, so if we look at the, the input, we'll notice that it's going from zero all the way to 3.4, and not, not exactly even, but roughly kind of even uh, uh, spaces between the, the inputs. And then we go from five, up to 10, 15, 17. So those differences are getting to be less and less. 17, 18, and then it starts coming back down. 16, uh, 10, 2.8. So the, there's kind of a middle point right here. There's a, a center. So this is certainly not linear. And it's probably going to be something like quadratic. Okay. Um, so... Let's see, let's actually put this data in now and see what we get. So here's what it looks like when we put it in. And now I push the button on the top left, looks like the line with the dots on the side, just under the one. And it gives me a model for a linear regression, but you can look at it, the line doesn't look like it's lined up with the points. So let's try a quadratic regression and boom, that looks good. It's like, it's right on. So. We're going to leave that as it is. Um, and so there's the equation of our regression model. If you're doing this in your own calculator and you get a slightly different answer, that's okay. Each computer, each calculator is going to have a little bit of a different way of estimating and evaluating these regression models. The next topic is what's called residuals. Residual is just a fancy word. All it means is the difference between a data point and the model. When you put the best fit line in there, it doesn't necessarily hit every point, but it gets close. 
right? And so, I mean, in physics, that's why, in my mind, it makes sense that we call it a best fit line. You know, but again, we're calling it regression models here. It's a best fit, so it doesn't exactly hit. Uh, and so for each data point, there's just going to be a difference. The residual is just the difference. How far the actual data point is from the predicted value of the model, of the regression model. So we're going back to our, our babies. And uh, they ask, what is the residual of the baby that is five weeks old? So we're going to look at that here. Let me show you this on the Desmos calculator. Okay, and so here we are. It's, I plotted it again. I got the linear regression. Now you'll notice that down here where it says linear regression, it gives you the equation that it gives you r squared r, and then there's a residuals button. So you just hit plot, and it gives you the residuals. So it's really easy with the Desmos calculator to do this. Again, it's, it's different in every graphing calculator how you do this. So the best thing to do if you're going to rely on the graphing calculator is to look up how you do that on the graphing calculator. Otherwise, you can use Desmos, and it gives it to you. It's really easy then. With the regression model and the actual value at five weeks, you can see that there is a, uh, a residual of negative 0.07. And it even plots the residuals there that you can see it. But negative 0.07. So the actual value is 4.4. Uh, the predicted value using the regression model, if we were to plug in 5, you would get uh, 4.47. That's easy to see in the Desmos calculator. Again, I can do this. And then if I put in 5, I get 4.47, you can see there. So the residual is the actual value minus the predicted value. 4.4 minus 4.47, that gives me negative 0.07. Uh, so what's the interpretation here? Well, the model's not perfect. It, it overestimated this particular value. Okay, so that's a basic introduction to regression models. It's an introduction because we're going to get into it more and more. It's something that's going to come back again and again and a skill that we're going to build in this class. So don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.